Welcome to my weekly market roundup. I am Sagar Nandi. I am the designer and developer of Q Trading Systems and Techniques. I used to work in IT, mostly based in Singapore. Nowadays, I am living in Thailand. I primarily trade stocks, swing trading stocks. I regularly share my trading ideas in the forum, traders forum, sakarnandi.com. You may also follow my stock and market analysis in the Twitter and the YouTube pages. Before I begin, let me go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on the trading systems and techniques I use. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. I am not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. I will have no liability for any investment decision made by the audience. As usual in today's topics, first I will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. Then I will try to identify potential trades using a complete 360 degrees analysis. I call it 360 degrees analysis because this technique allows you to identify trades that are aligned with the market's direction, sector, industry, strength, fundamental strength of the stock as well as technical strength. I'll study the market's direction using technical charts of the market ETFs. At the sector and industry level, I will study them using scorecard and heat map. Stock fundamentals, I will study that using stock scorecard. And for technical analysis, I will use the Q trading systems. Together, this technique allows you to identify trades quickly and confidently at the right edge of the chart, as I will demonstrate in today's session. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me start with the live system. I begin the commodities analysis with oil, analyzing the oil ETF USO using the weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together I call this at a glance template because using this weekly daily chart template you can easily decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart, usually in only a few seconds. US oil is moving inside a triangle pattern in the weekly chart. The range is becoming narrower and narrower. This week's candle shape is indecisive, a doji candle. The color is not significant because it is moving in a sideways manner. In the daily chart, price is moving also inside a range bound by the resistance memory at the top and watermark support at the bottom. In the last market roundup, I mentioned that you may not take any long trade in oil unless it can go out of the memory resistance lines. That didn't happen. Instead, on Friday, it came down, gave a magenta color flow candle. That is a bearish color candle. However, the weekly is indecisive and the color is cyan. Therefore, you may not take any short trade. You may watch US oil and take the next swing trade only when the direction is clearer. Gold ETF GLD In the weekly chart, it is continuing in an uptrend. However, this week's candle color 
has changed to neutral yellow and the candle shape is indecisive. Unlike the previous week when the candle color was cyan bullish and the shape was also bullish. In the daily chart it is still continuing in an uptrend with higher low and higher high. It has displayed a bearish headwind possible reversal signal on Thursday. Thursday's candle had a lower tail. It was not a bearish shape candle. It was indecisive shape candle. Therefore, you would not enter any bearish headwind setup short trend. However, if you are holding a long position in gold, you may protect that position by applying trailing stop. Price is very close to the upper boundary level that is too extended for me to take a new long trade in gold. From commodities analysis, I move on to market ETF analysis, analyzing the S&P 500 ETF SPY. In the previous market roundup, the video is available in my YouTube channel. I mentioned that I was bearish on the market, how far SPY and also several other market ETFs were near memory trend line support. These memory trend lines are automatically drawn, very smart trend lines. When price comes to a memory support, I avoid taking any short trend. That was the case one week ago. Based on the memory support lines in multiple market ETFs, I mentioned that I was not going to take any short trade. That turned out to be a very wise decision because this week price bounced up from the memory support. The weekly candle color turned bullish, flipped from magenta one week ago to bullish this week. The shape is also bullish. In the daily chart, if we see, it is bound by support memory at the bottom and resistance memory at the top. It is moving inside a triangle pattern in a narrow range. I avoid taking any new swing trade in any instrument when it is moving inside a range. You may wait for price to break out of the range thereby declaring the direction more clearly before taking any new trade. SPY is moving inside a narrow range in the daily chart. If the range was wider, then you could try to take a reversal trade at the two extremes of the range, either at the upper end of the range using a short setup or at the lower end of the range using a long setup. I call that a box trade setup. You may learn more about the box trade setup and the associated unambiguous checklist from the Q Systems books. Sometime when the daily range is narrow, you might take a reversal trade using the intraday time frame. In fact, there was such an opportunity on Friday. On Friday, soon after market open, I shared a tweet on my Twitter page saying that three of the market ETFs, IWM, QQQ and SPY, they all opened right at their respective daily memory trendline resistance. And if price reversed from the memory resistance lines, you could take a short trade, very low risk short trade using the fine tune intraday chart template. And now let me use the daily and intraday chart template to explain how you could take the trade, very low risk trade with high confidence. On the left hand side is the daily chart and right hand side is the 10 minute fine tune chart. 
on Friday price open with a gap up very close to the memory resistance line that was the point here in the intraday chart soon after that the early range high and early range low pivot levels were drawn they were drawn automatically by the Q systems if you look closely you would know that price open above this green pivot level that was previous days high Thursday's high therefore it opened with a gap up created the early range and then on this yellow color candle price closed below the early range displayed a bear release signal that gave a gap short day trade setup that was in itself a shorting opportunity and you could have more confidence in shorting because it was coming down from a memory resistance in the daily chart if you took the short trade your entry price would be at this point stop would be just above early range high and as price came down hit the magenta pivot that was previous days close you already covered more distance than the risk taken in the trade you could exit partial position at that time and apply trailing stop on the remaining position in a way that the entire trade was risk free from that point onward the remaining position would exit at the end of the day you wouldn't hold on to the remaining position overnight for multiple reasons one reason is that on friday the daily candle closed with a green color green traffic light color it didn't change to yellow because it didn't change to yellow you wouldn't hold on to the partial position overnight that is why i would enter the short trade in SPY using fine tune chart as a gap short day trade setup also taking advantage of the reversal from the daily memory resistance book partial profit at one of the intraday pivot levels where my risk distance was covered and book the remaining position profit at the end of the day NASDAQ ETF QQQ this also stopped at the memory support line one week ago in the weekly chart and this week it bounced up in the daily it is moving inside the range bound by support and resistance memories you may not take any swing trade unless it can break out of this narrow range Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA a similar picture the weekly candle color differs from magenta to cyan the shape also turned bullish here in the daily chart price was also inside a range on Thursday and Friday it could break out of the range in my swing trading I avoid taking breakout trades when the stop loss is far away in this case the logical stop loss point for me would be below the memory support level that would be too far from Friday's close for me to take a swing breakout trade either on Friday or on Thursday the stop loss would be too wide instead now if market continues to go up then I may wait for dia to come down little bit and then go up again giving a go with flow setup trend following long opportunity if that happens then my stop level will be below the then recent low which will give me a very low risk entry point Russell 2000 ETF IWM this was the weakest of the four market ETFs 
and I am continuing to maintain that view. Here also price reversed from the watermark support level in the weekly chart. However, the move was not bullish enough to turn the weekly backdrop color to cyan. This is the only one of the four market ETFs where the backdrop color in the weekly chart didn't turn cyan. In the daily, it is below the memory resistance level. If the market goes down next week, then IWM may give the lowest risk shorting opportunity among the four market ETFs. The market ETFs showed that the price reversed from memory support in multiple ETFs. That reversal is evident in the sector performance as well. Here I am looking at one month sector performance using three review periods. The red bar represents last five days performance, one week's performance. Green bars represent previous week's performance and the blue bars represent two weeks performance before that. Together they represent four weeks or about one month of sector performance. Any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up. Any bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week all the sectors went up and one week ago all the green bars came to the left of the zero line all the sectors went down that is showing the reversal of the market at the sector level the graphical view one month sector performance that I showed just now that shows the sectors performance at three review points I call it a snapshot view that doesn't show exactly how the sectors are transitioning from strength to weakness or weakness to strength. You can get that transition information from this sector scorecard and heat map. Here you can look at the same 11 sectors but now across much wider review period. Across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days etc. Cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. The scorecard and heat map across these 12 monthly periods and then recent periods instantly shows you which sectors are strong now. Using the 5 day period, I see materials and industrials are the strongest sectors now and the weakest ones are consumer staples and real estate. Consumer staples and real estate are defensive sectors. They are at the bottom. That tends to tell that the market is bullish. And that is what we saw from the market ETF study as well. The pace column shows acceleration, deceleration. Sign is acceleration. The most accelerating sectors are energy and materials. And the most decelerating sectors are consumer staples and utilities. Again, consumer staples, utilities, both are defensive sectors which are decelerating and the accelerating sectors are energy materials which are non-defensive sectors. That also tells that the market is bullish, at least in this week. How I align my trades with the sector's direction? I like to buy only in the strongest sectors or the most accelerating sectors. That would be materials, industrials and energy. And if I am looking for a shorting opportunity, I look for them in the weakest sectors or the most decelerating sectors. That would be utilities, consumer staples and real estate. Do I look for long or short trade? That is decided by the market's direction. If this week market is bullish, 
then I'm going to look for only long trades based on the market analysis and then looking at the sector scorecard heat map I will focus on materials industrials and energy that is how you can align the market level as well as sector level forces with your trade as I tend to say sector level and market level both are quite broad to make more accurate trading decisions you may drill down into the industry level use the similar scorecard and heat map for the industries and buy into the strongest industries when the market is bullish and short into the weakest industries when the market is bearish the sector and industry scorecard and heat map they are real-time tools they change in real time and you can use the insight from these heat maps to take trading decisions well ahead of others every week we also have a live market meeting I carry out a live market meet webinar on Wednesday 28th August I was conducting the webinar at 11.30 a.m. That was during market hours and I noticed at that time that on Wednesday energy was the best performing sector using the one day period. If you looked at the five day period you would see that over five day energy was still weak. In fact it was the weakest sector however over one day it was the strongest it was displaying acceleration and that was shown in the base column as well it was the strongest sector on Wednesday and it was also the most accelerating sector and you could know that in real time using the sector scorecard and heat map How can I use the real-time sector scorecard heat map to identify trading opportunities? I demonstrated that in the last Wednesday live market meetup. After looking at energy sectors strength and acceleration, I had drilled down into energy industries. Further drill down to identify fundamentally strong stocks using stock scorecard and looked at their technical charts. I found AROSE in that live webinar. The weekly was starting to go up with a bullish shape candle and it had reversed from the watermark support level creating a false downside breakout. In the daily chart price went up from the watermark support level from the false downside breakout created a higher low and on that day using live charts I could see that it was breaking out of the memory resistance line in the weekly live market meet webinar I explained that this is one stock that I was willing to take a long trade using the long breakout trade setup If I took the trade, my entry point would be just at the closing price or if I was using intraday chart, I could even take the long trade right as it was breaking out of the memory resistance and stop would be just below recent low. You could try to book profit once the risk distance was covered near the white direction line. I in fact took the trade. How did it turn out? This is the same stock AROC as of Friday's market close. I analyzed a long breakout trade setup on Wednesday that also gave a cyan color flow candle. After that price went up on Thursday and it became overbought. You could see the overbought condition from the stretch dot. On Friday price started to go up but then reversed. It displayed the bear release signal. 
you could also see the pair release signal from the band indicators. While this was happening, I had reasonable profit in the trade. And as I mentioned earlier, SPY and several other market ETFs opened with a gap up but reversed, giving a gap short day trade setup. USO oil commodity was also inside a narrow range. Looking at all those factors, I decided to book my profit in AROC. If the energy sector continues to go up, then I wouldn't mind taking another long trade in AROC. Probably if price comes to this support memory and reverses up from there, giving me the next go with flow long trade setup. I analyzed the market using the market ETFs and then I looked at the sector level using snapshot graphs as well as sector scorecard and heat map. I explained how using real time sector scorecard you can identify swings from strength to weakness and use that to take trades well ahead of others. What is my market outlook this week? It is neutral. All the market ETFs went up, several of them, actually three of them, SPY, QQQ and DIA, refers from bearish magenta color to cyan bullish color backdrop in the weekly chart. That is bullish. However, when you look at the daily charts, you see that all of them are moving inside narrow ranges and they are near the upper end of the range. That is not where you will like to take a long trade because they are more risky and the stop loss is also far away. In this indecisive market condition, I suggest not taking any new swing trade unless the direction is clearer. If the market reverses from here, that will be reversing from memory resistance level in multiple market ETFs. That will give low risk swing short opportunities in many fundamentally weak stocks. I will not look into that now because I don't know if the market will reverse from the memory resistance or it will break out of the memory resistance. I will analyze more stocks using the live system in my next Wednesday's live market meet. I also continue to share trading ideas in my forum sagarnandi.com both for the USA market and India market and let me show you a trade that I found in the India market. How did I find it? In Q Global using the Explorer sonar scans you can find trading opportunities either using real-time data or end of the data and you can do that in any market. I use this scan sometimes by the trend to look for stocks that are in an uptrend but pulled back somewhat and started to go up. They are in an uptrend, confirmed uptrend but now giving a low risk entry point. I ran this scan on a number of Indian stocks that are very liquid. I have 1009 stocks in that list. This is the report. Out of 1009 stocks, it found 90 stocks that are possible buying the trend opportunities. It has multiple columns. You can use these columns to look for price moves and signals. Not only today, but yesterday, this week, previous week, or even before that. Let me explain how. From Q Global Result, I copy all the data 
and transfer into the Q finder tool. And now immediately using visual coloring, it shows what is going on in these dogs. From the legend, you can see that red highlighted cells represent today's signal. Green highlighted cells represent yesterday's signal, blue for this week and yellow for previous week. And the shaded colors represent cumulative data. This column represents cumulative number of bullish signals in any of these 90 stocks as of Friday. I can double click to sort by that and these are the stocks that are giving maximum number of bullish signals on Friday. This bank, City Union Bank, caught my attention. The Indian government is trying to revitalize the banking sector. That is why I drill down into City Union Bank. Even before looking into the chart, you can see from this trade finder that on Friday it had bullish pressure. It had a breakout setup breaking out of memory resistance. It gave a pullback trade setup as well. That is a stock that is in an uptrend pulls back to support and goes up again. It also gave a Q standard go with flow trend following trade setup. And one week ago it touched a memory support and went up. Even before opening the chart you can visualize what is going on. One week ago it bounced up from a memory support. Today it is breaking out of memory resistance. It is also pulling back to support and going up from there giving a possible trend following long trade setup and it is going up with high bullish pressure. All that is happening in a stock that is a banking stock in the Indian market where the government is trying to revitalize the banks. Will you not think of this as a possible buying opportunity? I did and therefore I wanted to look into its industry strength and also technical strength. That is what we call 360 degree trade where the industry strength, technical strength, fundamental strength all are aligned. Let me look at the fundamental strength first. I can carry out a peer analysis for the stock by clicking the peer analysis button. This is the City Union Bank. It is using the peer analysis tool now. Using City Union Bank as the root stock, finding its peer stocks in the diversified banks industry and retrieve the vital statistics of all the PR stocks. It has found 15 stocks in this industry. These are all Indian stocks. Now the analysis is being done on the Indian market. From the vital statistics snapshot on this page, you can instantly see that the stock is overvalued. However, it is having steady earnings growth in the quarterly periods as well as in the yearly periods. It is also having steady earnings growth in the quarterly as well as in the yearly periods. Fundamentally, you could consider buying the stock because of the earnings growth, revenue growth and also the very robust earnings quality. What about its industry strength? This belongs to diversified banks. I can carry out the sector industry rotation analysis on the Indian market as well. So this is the sector industry rotation tool now. I have run it on the Indian market. If I look at the sectors, over five days, financials is one of the strongest, the second strongest sector. And the pace column is showing that it is the most accelerating sector. At the sector level, it is strong. However, as I tend to say, sector level is too broad. 
to make more accurate trading decisions you may drill down into the industry level and let me do that when I drill down into the financial industries look at diversified banks I see that its strength is also improving from previous periods the color is changing from magenta to cyan and the base column is showing it is accelerating therefore at industry level it is strengthening accelerating and we may consider buying a stock in the industry fundamentals that was strong we already saw that the last step will be to look at the technical charts city union bank in the indian market using q at a glance weekly daily chart template from the weekly i see that it is going up prices nicely supported by multiple memory support trend lines the relative performance line is showing that it is outperforming the market this week's candle color is bullish cyan backdrop color and the shape is also pretty bullish in the daily chart it pulled back to the white direction line and bounced up from there that's why it came in the pullback signal and it also break out of the memory resistance earlier it came to the memory support and came up from there friday's candle color flow candle color in the daily chart is bullish the shape is also bullish this is looking like a breakout trade setup to me which is also a pullback buy trade setup in a stock that is fundamentally strong and the stock is in an industry that is gaining strength accelerating in my view city union bank is giving a low risk breakout as well as pull back by setup as of Friday's close. As you can see, the systems and techniques I use, they can be used effortlessly not only in the USA market, but also in any other major market in the world. I showed an example in the Indian market, but you could apply it to any other country or market as well. I will look for more live trading opportunities in the USA market in my next upcoming live market meet that is on Wednesday. The USA market is moving sideways. You may exercise caution and not take new swing trades unless the market's direction is clear. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in my next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.